Hi, I'm Anthony Mason, and welcome to Eye to Eye. Katie Couric is on assignment. May marked the deadliest month this year for U.S. troops in Iraq. Casualties have increased since the U.S. troop surge began in February. But in an exclusive interview, Iraq's prime minister tells Lara Logan that the security plan is working. When you go to sleep at night, what is the one thing that keeps you awake? What's your greatest fear for Iraq now, given where the country stands now? First, the unity of Iraq. Second, the harmony of all Iraqi people in order not to have sectarian or national or religious differences. I am worried about Iraq being a place for domestic and international struggles. I am worried about the will of some people who don't want Iraq to be strong and want it to be weak in order to make its regional position weak. And I think that a strong democratic Iraq will be a stabilizing factor in the region. What is not working at the moment? What has not improved with the increase in troops and the, the attempt to make Baghdad safer? What is, where are you failing? There is nothing that hasn't improved. On our side, we have increased the number of our troops, and the same thing happened on the coalition forces side. And there's an overall improvement in the security situation. But we are in a race against terrorism. It is trying to break the law, and we are trying to impose it. When we talk to Iraqi people on the streets of Baghdad, they say security is worse, murders went down, but they're coming back up again. There are still bombs every day. Their quality of life has not improved. Electricity is worse. Gas is harder to get. Water is less. There are no jobs. What is your sense of the quality of life to Iraqi people? All the signs that we get talking to people are that the surge has made no difference in their lives. Of course it is painful that the Iraqi people have no services while having all this wealth. We should have the best services in the region. This lack of services that we are talking about is mainly in Baghdad because it is the center of terrorist activities. This is one of the wars that we are going through. We are at war with terror groups and former members of the Ba'ath regime who are targeting the services of the people through targeting the oil pipelines, the electricity stations and the electricity towers, even targeting water stations. We are facing a war where the enemy is trying not only to kill Iraqis but to prevent them from having public services. So it's true that there is a lack in public services despite the major improvements introduced by the government. But we inherited these shortages from the previous regime. All the infrastructure and the stations have been destroyed in the time of the previous regime. And now we have improved many of these facilities and the factories which are related to the services, but it still requires more effort. What is stopping you from bringing more Sunnis back into government jobs? What is preventing you from announcing a local election? What is preventing you from enacting the oil law? We hear a lot of talk about these things. They're the political benchmarks that everyone is screaming to see, particularly the U.S. government, and yet we don't see any action. So what's standing in your way? Our Sunni brothers have been partners sharing authority since the beginning of this government. The head of the parliament is Sunni, and the vice president is Sunni, and the deputy prime minister is Sunni. There are numbers of ministers who are Sunni. In the army, the majority are Sunni. The Sunnis are at the heart of the political operation. We are partners, and there are no eliminations of any Sunni or Shia elements. This government is a national unity government, formed by elections and in accordance with a program put in place by the political powers in the parliament. Your country is being run on an American political timetable. When you hear people in Washington telling you what you should be doing, how does that make you feel? Are you resentful of that? Actually, I can't accept that the Iraqi government is being directed by any authority outside the Iraqi constitutional system. The Americans never issue any orders for us to do this or not to do that, as this is a question of sovereignty, and they respect that sovereignty. Rather, there's cooperation, coordination, and there are common interests shared by both sides. Certainly we do tell them not to do this or not to do that. They sometimes recommend we do this or we don't do that. But all this happens in the context of cooperation between the two sides, and definitely not in the context of receiving. The question is, where are you failing? 
أفهم مفهوم النجاح والفشل هو نسبي. Actually, I think that failure and success are relative things, related to the challenges. Considering the challenges that we're facing now, I can say that both relative success and failure are there. Considering the circumstances we're facing, the successes that we can talk about lie in the fact that we succeeded in protecting Iraq, succeeded in preventing Iraq from sliding into civil war and having its political structure destroyed and succeeded in preventing Iraq from being divided. Through the moderate approach that we adopted here in the government, we managed to contain sectarian violence, which could have divided the Iraqis into Shiites, Sunnis, Arabs and Kurds. And given the circumstances, I think all these should be considered successes. Those who would look at such achievements without considering the challenges we face would probably qualify this as a failure. But given the circumstances, I see that we have been successful because this success has been tied to the nature of the challenges.